Greetings, everyone. Ooh, vacuum tubes. Well, I have my pile of amplifier boards I want to test on the analyzer, and we will get to those, don't worry. But today I want to take a journey down a side road and take a look at the stereo vacuum tube preamplifier. Well, I think it's about four years ago, somebody sent me a box of electronics, and this was included in that, pre-assembled. And I did make a video on that, and I'll put a link in the description because I have the schematic and uh, you know a circuit overview and some tests I ran on it then. But today I want to put on the analyzer and see how it performs. So yeah, like I say, it's a stereo vacuum tube amplifier with the in and outputs and the uh, power and level control. Now the circuit runs off of 12 volts AC. It's important to use AC because it has a voltage multiplier circuit. And because a single stage amplifier it just has one active element in each channel, those don't have very good supply rejection, so it has a ripple filter, an active ripple filter circuit here. So all this stuff here, the transistors are not they don't participate in any amplification. It's just a very simple single element amplifier here. Connections have been made. Power and signal. Only going to check one channel. Really all that's necessary. One word of caution here. When connecting your analyzer to circuits that use higher voltages, it's important to make sure there's no standing voltage on your signal lines. For example, I know that the signal comes off the plate of this tube, and before the tubes warm up, there can be a high voltage on the signal line. Even though there is a blocking capacitor, that capacitor still has to charge up, but when you turn power on, there could be a large spike of voltage, and you don't want to damage your equipment. So what I did... I turned the device on and checked with my multimeter that there wasn't a large signal on, or I should say a large voltage on the signal lines here. So yeah, just be mindful of that and be safe. Okay, so for my so-called kickoff measurements at 1 kilohertz, this being a preamplifier, I want to set its output to 0 dBV, which is 1 volt RMS, 1 kilohertz. I set its level control fully open to get a gain measurement, six, about 16.5 dB. And that's at the input impedance of the quant asylum being around 100 kilo ohms. I'll have to verify that. Because when I load this preamp down, I know it's going to cause the voltage to drop. And we'll check that out as well. And you can ignore this. I don't have an 8 ohm load connected to this, and we're not really interested in power being a preamp. So uh, our total harmonic distortion is measuring right around 1%. And you can see that it's dominated by this second order harmonic, which is about at uh, minus 40 dB. The third order is way down there at below minus 70 so it's pretty inconsequential we're seeing a lot of uh, power supply noise even though it does have a filter there's still quite a bit getting in you can see the harmonics of that I do remember in that other video when I tested this thing there was a lot of hum coming through the speaker well not a lot but there was a, a background hum I noticed now when I graph the distortion curves of this preamplifier, I'll also load its output down with a 10K resistor because a lot of amplifiers won't have 100K input impedance. Some of them will have lower input impedance, so it's important to test that as well. I went ahead and added the 10K load to the preamp's output because I needed to get the reference point anyway for my other measurements. And you can see the gain decreased to about 14 dB. And I know my settings are correct because to get that 0 dB output, which is 1 volt, I have to put minus 14 in, so I know my settings are correct. 
frequency response. Well, you can see in the lower end, we are rolling off. We're 1 dB down at 2030, about 35 hertz. And we're 3 dB down around 18 hertz. So and it's not the greatest there. And that's due to the coupling capacitors they used. This is the 100K load on the output, by the way. At the high end, there's no issue, or like one tenth of a dB down at 20 kilohertz, so no big deal there. Okay, so now I added the 10K load resistor to the output of the preamp, making the total impedance around 9.1 if you include the input impedance of the analyzer. And I also set the signal so that the output's still at 0 dB, just you know, make sure things are even. And not so hot, is it? We're rolling off 3 dB down at 80 hertz, which is really totally unacceptable. And that's due to the output capacitors. It's just not the right value. The output and input capacitor value should be evaluated and increased in this circuit. And it doesn't really affect the high end, of course. So if you connect this preamp to an amplifier that has a low input impedance, you want to be mindful of your frequency roll-off here. It's going to be pretty severe. Output level of the preamp, which is the analyzer's input, versus distortion. You can see it's a steady climb as the signal gets higher. As we saw before, at 0 dBV, we were at 1% at 100k and at 9.1k we're about one and a half percent you know a much lower signal level about a quarter of the input which would be right around here you can see the distortion level is much lower but we're still around 0.2 or 3 and of course at a higher level we're uh, getting well above one percent we're you know, we're around 0.3% here. And I didn't really go all, all the way into clipping, but you can see it's starting to have a little curve northward here, so I know we're getting closer to clipping. But being a line level output, we're looking more around in this area and maybe below to see what's going on. Frequency versus distortion. In both cases, measured at 0 dBV. So with the load on the output of the preamp at 100k pretty flat across the frequency band maybe just a little peak up here at 20 hertz but you know still around one percent so it's not hi-fi and at 9.1k load on the output you see the distortion went up to one and a half percent and it stayed pretty flat except at the lower end of the frequency range and I think that's due to the output coupling capacitor. As you pass through the pole frequency of the circuit, the voltage across the capacitor plates get larger. And apparently there's some nonlinearity because at 20 hertz we're getting up to 5%. So there you go, the cheap tube preamp. Flawed in many ways. Some people might say, oh, I want that warmth from the second order harmonic in the sound. I kind of disagree. I want my amplification to be as clean as possible. But some people want that tube sound effect. Of course, you can make a tube amplifier with very low distortion as well. But, you know, this circuit is flawed. Terrible frequency response, especially as you load the output. And it does allow quite a bit of hum get in from the power supply. And I think I'll wrap it up here, and thank you for watching. So with a preamplifier, I want to set its output, output, 